On this James the Bike Guy, we're taking a look at the Trek Fuel EX. This is a highly capable, full suspension, all mountain bike that strikes a good balance between price, performance, and the value you get for it. So in this video, we're gonna go over some of the features and designs of this Fuel EX frame. We'll go into some of the part specs, talk about the geometry, and then of course, we'll find out what it weighs. So please follow along, letting me know your thoughts down in the comment section below as we go through this bicycle. And let's get into it. So the Trek Fuel series, or rather Fuel EX, has been around for quite a while now. The Fuel EX is Trek's all-mountain bike. It falls somewhere between a highly capable trail bike to even something that you could potentially take for you know one day at a lift service mountain bike park if you were just getting into it. Now this bike is set up with 130 millimeters of ABP suspension in the rear and 140 millimeters of suspension travel in the front. The Fuel EX series is going to use an Alpha Platinum frame. They of course got their Fuel EX 9.7, 9.8, 9.9, which all use a carbon fiber frame. But the ones that come just with the number and no nine point in front of it are gonna be this alpha platinum aluminum. Now the frame itself runs internal cable routing, an inch and an eighth to inch and a half head tube that features something called knock block, which allows them to run this straight shot down tube. So if you take a look at the down tube, it goes straight into the head tube and knock block essentially allows the front end to lock out so that the crown of the fork can't contact the down tube. Now that series is pretty neat, but it does require using a specific stem and spacers. But the neat thing is Trek does sell a conversion kit where you can retain knock block and put whatever cockpit you want on it. Now this aluminum frame has a rocker link going to this fixed mount down below on previous generations of the Fuel EX series, the chainstay used to come up to full floater, which essentially meant that the shock was pressing onto itself on the suspension. Because shocks have gotten so much better, they no longer need to do that to get a nice bottomless feel and pedaling efficiency out of the bike. And they have a really neat suspension design called ABP. What that is, is it basically allows the seat stay and the chain stay to come together on a concentric bearing, allowing the braking system to virtually have no effect on the suspension performance. Now, in a lot of cases, you'd have anti-rise issues as where you're descending down a hill or something like that, and you grab the brakes and it either stiffens up or locks out the rear end. And that's just not an issue on this bike. The other neat thing is it runs something they call a minnow link in the connection between the seat stay and your rocker link. What that allows for is an adjustment between a high and a low position, allowing you to change the frame angles by half a degree. So that means in a size medium large, this bike is gonna have a 66 degree head tube angle in low or a 66 and a half degree in high. It's gonna have a seat tube angle of 67 and a half low or 68 high. It's gonna run a 437 millimeter chainstay and then a reach a 45.5 and low or 46 centimeters and high. So that means that this geometry is going to be on the more modern size, but a little more conservative of some of the smaller boutique brands that are really getting slack and long. Now the 140 millimeters of suspension on this bike comes from a RockShox 35 gold. This is going to be a Deb on air air spring fork. It's going to run a motion control damper unit, which is going to have progressive lockout. You've got small detents as you go through all the way from open to firm. It's going to have adjustable rebounds. And I like that they put on the 44 millimeter offset for the fork, which is going to help quicken up steering, but keep things stable. The shock is a Fox float DPS shock. It's got the evolve canister and a three position damper. So you've got all the way from firm to trail to open and then you're gonna have adjustable rebound to get everything dialed in. Drivetrain wise, the EX7 comes with a SRAM NX drivetrain. So this is an Eagle drivetrain with an 11 to 50 tooth cassette on the back. It's running the SRAM NX rear derailleur. And through the front, you've got the NX crank set with a 30 tooth narrow wide chain ring, 
running through a press fit 92 bottom bracket with a dub spindle size. Coming to the cockpit, we've got a Bontrager alloy 31.8 handlebar, a Rhythm 31.8 stem. You've got the SRAM NX shifters, which is gonna be thumb thumb operation. And on the left hand side, you've got the one by style lever for your transax dropper post. So we go ahead and push that button. Boom, up goes the dropper post. So that way you're able to slam the seat when you're going downhill or raise it when you're trying to go back up. And to slow the bike down, we've got the SRAM level T brakes. These are a nice DOT hydraulic disc brake with a two piston caliper on the both the front and the rear. For a wheel and tire setup, this is a place I think the bike really shines. So it's got the Bontrager XR4 Team Issue tires in a 29 by 2.6. These tires are actually quite nice and something that Bontrager's done a good job over the past, getting a much better traction tire on this Fuel EX. It's also got the Line Comp 30 wheels. These are a personal favorite because they're tubeless ready and they come with a 54 tooth hub. So that's already pretty fast engaging, but for around $30, you can upgrade that to 108 teeth of engagement, which makes the stock wheel set that comes on this bike super fast engaging. And it's an upgrade that pretty much everyone should do right out of the box. So now that we've taken a look at the features and designs of this Trek Fuel EX7, let's go ahead and find out exactly what this bike weighs. The actual weight of the Trek Fuel EX7 comes in and weighs 30.95 pounds. Well, thanks for watching this video on the Trek Fuel EX7. Go ahead and let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Be sure to hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed the video. While you're at it, leave any comments you have or questions down in the comment section. And don't forget to leave a thumbs up because it lets me know you enjoyed the video.